Hi, my name is Karen Alari, and welcome to my acrylic painting demo, Shady River. We're going to be talking about painting water today. I know a lot of my students have problems with water or are intimidated by water, and it's really one of my favorite things to paint. You can just get lost in it, and it's a lot of fun. Here's a list of the paints I use. These are acrylic paints. and uh, So let's get started. Here's the... Uh, drawing portion. I start all of my paintings with a simple line drawing and what I've done here is divide my canvas into thirds and where those thirds intersect those are good spots to get to have um, focal points in your painting but where you don't want to have them is right dead center either horizontally or vertically so I like to put those lines in there to remind me not to hit those center points, but try to put focal points on the intersections of the thirds. After the line drawing, the second thing I do is the block in. And the block in is always focused on the values of your painting. In other words, don't worry too much about the color. Don't worry too much about getting it exactly right. You just want what you want to get exactly right is the value of the paint you're putting down. In other words, the relative lightness or darkness. You want to establish your darkest darks. And this area I'm painting right now is actually where the darkest dark is going to be in my painting. So I'm trying to establish how dark that's going to be. And then I want to try to not make anything else any darker than that. Because as you move back into a painting, you recede in distance in a painting, all your values are going to get lighter. And that's what you want to keep in mind. So, you know, I always I always say it's all about values. You can really, if you nail your values exactly, you can do have a lot of fun with the colors and change them up a lot. But doing a block in first like this, it helps you establish exactly comparatively want your values. Always be comparing one area to the other area. You're just putting in big simple shapes and saying now is this area lighter than that area or should it be darker than that area? And this is the time to make the changes. If, if you get this right and establish it and then stick to it for the rest of your painting you'll be doing well and it'll turn out well. So I finished my blocking at this point and I'm moving on to filling in my background areas and adding my detail. I'm trying to make these rocks and they were, as you could see by the reference photo, they are very, they had very distinct lines and the geological formation is, is very visible on them. So I switched over from my round bristle brush to a small flat brush in order to get some some lines and some straight edges and to be able to more simply make those rock formation shapes. Again working on the the values, trying to get the shadow and light. This area of my painting is in bright sunlight so the lights are going to be very light and the darks are going to be very dark. Just working on in an area like this, I first blocked it in and knew what I wanted the end value to be of that area. And then when I come back to do the detail, I'll start by laying in a shadow color, the color that's underneath, and then come back over loosely um, and lightly with the lighter colors. And that will leave little bits of that darker color I put down first underneath. It's so important when you're painting to Remember to keep the paintbrush loose in your hand and use your whole arm to make your stroke. You, you don't want to hold your paintbrush like a pencil. You want to hold it loosely, keep your wrist loose, and move your whole arm. I'm just coming back and adjusting my values again a little bit and trying to establish this background greenery. It was just a, a bunch of bushes and small trees and all in sunlight so there was a lot of shadow and light showing up. When I paint foliage I often use the side of my brush 
as you can see, and I'm rolling and pushing my brush around to create um, shapes that look foliage-like. You want to you want to keep it loose, and you don't want to try to paint leaves. Um, you just want it to loosely resemble those things. So I'm moving pretty quickly through this area of the painting because I want to get on to the water later, which is really our focus and our subject this month. Um, and But to talk a little bit about color, my greens I make with phthalo blue and ultramarine blue, cadmium yellow, um, nickel azo gold, quinacridone gold, and those are I mix those together, adding little bits of cadmium red sometimes, and just try to vary the greens as I go along. You don't want to use the same color of green all the way across your block of, of foliage, but you want to try to make variations um, as you would find in nature, and always referring back to your reference photo to pick out those colors and, and add them into your painting. I've moved on to the mossy colors that are on the rock and um, now adding some of the darks back in again. There's always the process of back and forth with the lights and the darks. So I've finished up as much as I'm going to do with uh, those dark, those background um, areas right now and we can get on to the water itself. In this reference photo, the front half of the water was in shadow and the back half of the water was in light, which is why I chose this reference photo to show you um, the differences there. The first thing I did was lay in some darker colors. I always start with some darker colors, and if you look at your reference photo, just look in those dark colors in the water. And water um, is as varied uh, as it can be. I mean, depending on the light source, the kind of uh, sky, how much sunlight, the things that it's reflecting, it's it's going to be different and the colors are going to be different. And our North Umpqua River here in Oregon has this very teal blue color to it, which is just beautiful and very characteristic of the river. So I started with those darks and now I'm adding some lighter colors and as I looked at my reference photo, the lighter colors were warmer, in other words, had a little more red to them. You see, as what I'm doing right now is in water you don't want to have hard edges. There's very few areas where you're going to have a hard edge. So I'll lay in a color and then I will rinse my brush and get it just slightly damp and then I come back over and I brush all the edges that I've just made and soften them up because um, you just don't want those hard edges in water. It won't look like water. As I use my brush, and this is a soft round brush here, I'm not using my bristle brush, um, I move my hand uh, as the water would move. So you can see here, it's you know, the water I, I can see from my reference photo, it's flowing off of this little wave that's in the foreground. So I'm, that's the way I move my brush. I try to move my hand in my brush as the water is moving in order to get those shapes back and forth with the darks. Here I'm adding in some of the dark, darker areas I can see. Always glancing at my reference photo and at the area I'm looking to. Not necessarily to get exactly what's there, but to try to nail the color and the value. And then I let the water flow from the brush. And here again I'm coming back with a wet uh, brush clean brush and softening out those edges again. And this process of building the layers a little bit darker, a little bit lighter, in where the wave comes up, there was a little darker area in there, so I added a little bit of dark and then blended that in. Remember with acrylic paints you can blend, but it's a very short time span that you can blend in. So don't move on to the other half of your painting thinking you're going to come back and blend later because you will it'll be dry by then and you won't be able to. So you just work little sections at a time and make sure that your edges are what you want them to be before before the paint dries. 
and I, I, I again looking back continually at my uh, reference photo and I see where the the darks are and I see the wave patterns that the um, waves are making and just try to mimic that with my brush as the waves come up and the sunlight hits them you see more green in the water um, the, the water as, as the wave rises the sun can actually go through the wave itself and give it some more luminosity and again softening my edges with my wet brush especially the bottom edges um, sometimes the top edges of a, of a wave you want to leave a little bit of hard edge but I build it up kind of from the bottom so we'll come back later and put our whites on and our light colors and the splashes that are in the water right now we're building up those patterns in the water um, the lights and darks and I've got that greenish color back on my brush right now and I'm adding in some of the green areas now back to the lighter colors this is my first layer of, of splash color and it's very blue the one thing you want to be very very careful with in doing water is not to use white straight or not very much white maybe slight little sparkles but especially this area of the water it's all in shadow so you'd be surprised how dark the light area is in the shadow that's how you make it look like shadow this is just um, a medium warm blue color in other words I've used more of my ultramarine blue in it than I did in the um, darker shadow colors which actually had some of that quinacridone gold in them um, base color that I tend to use is a thalo blue with cadmium red added to it uh, and then a little bit of quinacridone gold and, and white adjusting it to the value that you want and as the areas are lighter they get warmer so the mixture goes more towards the ultramarine and has uh, less of the gold in it so I'm, I'm adding just the little ripples I keep looking back to my reference photo and just grabbing a little image of, uh, in my mind of what I want to add in and I'm use, I use the side of my brush very lightly held the paint is thicker at this point as you go on through the painting you start thin and then your paint gets thicker and thicker so I'm just trying to keep my edges loose I won't soften these edges as much as I did the under swirly kind of part of the water these are this is where the water's um, breaking into foam and into little waves and as I make the little waves that come over I roll my brush downward as if as if I'm a as if it's the wave itself um, cascading over um, you can see it there where I just establish the top rim of the wave which is always a little bit lighter the sun comes in and touches that top rim and then rolling it over this is the part that I really enjoy about water going back here and softening up a few of those edges especially on the underside of the wave as you can see I kept more of the hard edges along the top now I've gone even slightly lighter and slightly warmer again in color and here I've added a, a little bit of yellow and a little bit of uh, quinacridone magenta um, just to warm up that color even more as as you go lighter I don't I don't want to get too light in this area because this is the shadow so I want to be sure to keep all my values down in order to for this whole area to read as shadowed water the area beyond that rock to the right is all going to be lit later right now the color I have laid in there is the the underneath color the dark color of it so um, we'll come back later and start adding the lights out there and you'll be able to see how that how you can make that sharp distinction between the water in light and the water in shadow which adds just a lot of interest to your painting so that's the end of part one thanks for joining me and please join me for Shady River part two